Hello, Professor Chako. Can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Pawan. How are you? Fine. I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm, 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 how are you doing? I'm I'm good. I'm doing good too. So yeah, we'll start up the session in a while. And uh, before we starting up the session, I'll just have a brief introduction of uh, Professor uh, Mustach Chako to the attendees and participants. Yeah. Uh, coming to Professor uh, Mustak Chako, he is felicitated for the innovations in laparoscopy and minimal access surgery with a certificate of honor awarded by government of Jammu and Kashmir. He enrolled in World's Who is Who, a prestigious publication from United States of America. He is working as additional or associate professor at GMC Srinagar from 22nd October 2017 and working as assistant professor surgery at GMC Srinagar from 2012 to 2007 and worked as permanent lecturer surgery at GMC Srinagar from 2009 to 2012. And he also worked as ad hoc lecturer surgery at GMC Srinagar from 2007 to 2009 and worked in several uh, institutions and uh, universities uh, starting from 1992. Coming to his academic uh, background, he has done with his MBBS from Government Medical College, Srinagar from 1988 to 1992 in Kashmir University and MS from Sheri Kashmir Institute of Medical Science, Srinagar, Kashmir in 1994 to 1997. Fellowships in laparoscopy from SGRH and GEM Hospital, Chennai, 2005. And uh, yeah, he, he, he is a member of Northern Chapter of Association of Surgeries of India, Life Member of Association of Surgeons of India, Life Member of Indian Medical Association, and Life Member of Indian Association of Gastrointestinal and Endosurgeons, Life Member of Indian Hernia Society, Life Member of Association of Minimal Access Surgeons of India, Life Member of Society of Laparoscopic and Endoscopic Surgeons of India, Executive Member of Jammu and Kashmir Associations of Surgery Surgeons of India, Joint Secretary and Editorial Member of JAKASI. He is an editor and editorial board member of several international journals and he had many scientific publications and have attended many international conferences in his curriculum. And currently, he is an editorial board member of Enleven Surgery and uh, Transplantation. He is uh, one of the active editorial board members who have already published many of his works with us. And uh, uh, we wish uh, the, uh, to continue the active spirit of him for the journal. And uh, he is going to uh, present a webinar on endoscopic anatomy of uh, inguinal hernia. Professor Chako, we welcome you for this webinar. And uh, yeah, please uh, go ahead with your talk. Uh, thank you very much, Pavan. Uh, uh, it's an honor to be here and joining this. You have uh, done an extensive introduction of my, I'm just a student of laparoscopic surgery. And I'm thankful to you for giving me space in this and inviting me for a talk. You know, we are passing through a very bad and a very active time of this COVID. I hope everything moves uh say wrong words now and we are now passing through the fasting season i wish happy ramzan to everybody i welcome everybody on board yeah, well you know that uh, we are keeping busy these days by these seminars and webinars online and this is a good way of uh, getting updated in this time and we are uh, staying home and staying safe thank you once again and uh, i think i should start without wasting many mo much time further I should start my presentation today and today I, I, I have uh, I think I'm going to talk on something which we surgeons don't uh, give much attention to but is very important because uh, inguinal hernia hernia as such is an extensive subject and a lot of research has been over there and it has uh, uh, lots of newer horizons to be explored so uh, should I go to my presentation should I share my screen Yes, you can share your screen and start your presentation, Professor. Okay, uh, I have clicked on sharing my screen, so I wanted to. Should uh, can I go to share my presentation? So how should I share my presentation? Uh, if you click on share your screen, you will be getting three options. You can click on share. Uh, I mean, application. If you click on that application and uh, select your PPT, you can show your PPT. Fine. So you are presenting to everyone, but uh, 
my presentation is not coming yes click on your powerpoint presentation open your okay, powerpoint will, presentation should i minimize this icon yeah you can minimize it no issues or else you can directly uh, open your powerpoint presentation i am minimizing this and i am opening my powerpoint presentation exactly yes i can see now fine is it there yes it's there can everybody see it uh, yes everybody can see that you can go ahead so i was saying uh, thank you so uh, i was saying that we are uh, doing these webinars this is just a way to get updated these days i wish uh, I welcome everybody on board. Thank you for joining me. So I will start a, a talk on uh, the endoscopic anatomy of inguinal and hernia because I felt that hernia is a subject dear to me and dear to all of us because we all of us are doing uh, hernia repairs uh, every now and then. But anatomy is a very important uh, segment of this subject because this is not well read and well taught in our medical school days because as you understand we have been you know now we have been given access to the anterior repairs the open repairs and the posterior anatomy which is the laparoscopic anatomy has to be uh, you know has to be uh, what do you say to be get to, to get acquainted with so uh, endoscopic anatomy is actually a laparoscopic anatomy actually what we say is that inguinal hernia as you all understand is a subject that uh, we have been taught in our medical school days and we were not been taught the endoscopic anatomy and as now we are venturing into laparoscopic surgery it becomes mandatory to understand and know see there are two three segments knowing a thing understanding a thing and doing doing a thing for hernia it is important we in in our medical school days we knew hernia but we did not understand hernia and thanks to laparoscopy that we understand we know what we understood and then we are doing uh, surgery as you all understand hernia is defined as an abnormal protrusion of a viscous or a part of viscous through an opening which could be natural or artificial through the walls of its containing cavity and the parts of the hernia would be coverings of the hernia the sac or the content i am audible am i audible to hello hello you're audible you're audible to okay, everyone okay 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 fine so the yeah. inguinal hernia we as laparoscopic surgeon if you go to textbooks you will find there's a lot of uh, you know these uh, classifications are there about the hernia but we are not interested in those classifications there are more than 10 classifications till now for the inguinal hernia we are as laparoscopic surgeons we are interested to know about whether it is a direct or an indirect hernia and what is an indirect hernia as you all know that a hernia that comes through a a process it a defined sacs and passes through the internal ring so in indirect hernia you need to have a preformed processes vaginalis or something like a sac through which the hernia comes out while as in the direct hernia you do need to have a you do need to have a sac sac gets formed it comes through the uh, medial to the inferior epigastric artery through the hazelback strangle which is the in for uh, the weakness uh, the uh, i mean say the uh, posterior uh, part the posterior wall of the inguinal canal so i was just saying that why is it difficult to understand uh, this uh, hernia we need to understand that if we look at the inguinal canal it has got three segments the first segment is in the peritoneal the retroperitoneum and the peritoneum uh, peritoneal cavity the second segment travels through the walls of the through the walls of the inguinal canal or through the walls of the abdominal wall and then it becomes superficial the segment third which is the superficial in the scrotum and then it becomes superficial in the scrotum so it passes through three segments and while it is passing from the peritoneum through the inguinal canal to the scrotum it is it, it gets a curve it it is oblique it is twisted which is again an anti hernia factor so you are not seeing the inguinal canal in single dimension that is the reason like you enter with a uh, laparoscope into the peritoneal cavity you look at the gallbladder the whole gallbladder is visible to you in one vision in one view 
That's not true about the inguinal canal. The inguinal canal is in three segments. It is, you can say, separated in first floor, second floor, third floor, and you cannot see all the three floors in a single view. That is the reason why it is difficult to understand the anatomy of the inguinal region and inguinal canal. So no wonder that uh, when we look at what people have talked about, the understanding of the hernia, so understanding, knowing, and then doing, this subject is that way quite interesting. And that's the reason when it is not fully understood, there are many other days to explore newer horizons in this. So it would not be wrong to quote this man. He's a British surgeon, uh, Professor Ogilvy. He says, I know more than 100 surgeons whom I would cheerfully allow to remove my gallbladder, but only one to whom I would like to expose my inguinal canal. So who is the one? whom he would uh, allow to expose his canal is the one who knows it, who understands it, and then who does it. So this is a very important subject that is met, much misunderstood, possibly because we know it, we don't understand it. And what we practice is what we know, don't understand, or understand, don't know. So if you do, if you know it, understand it, and do it, you are the surgeon whom again we will offer to get his inguinal canal to explode. I hope you understand what I am trying to convey. So that tent amounts to saying that it is important that anatomy is an important segment of uh, this surgery. Am I audible to uh, all, uh, Pavan? Hello? Yes, you are audible to everyone. Okay, yes, fine. My slides are, are seen there. Okay. Yes, very clearly we can see your slides too. Okay, and fine, uh, yeah, I would like to uh, you know put a, a request to all the attendees. If you have any questions, you can put over in the chat then and there, or you can raise your hand so that uh, Professor will be available for you to address the questions then and there. Is that right? Okay, yes, fine. You... Should I go ahead? Okay, yeah, fine. Please go ahead. With your so, so I was talking, say that now look at this uh, anatomy. When we look at the laparoscopic repair. We need to understand what is the basic concept of the anatomy, the concept of anatomy. The concept of anatomy was generated by a person, Henry Fruchard. Henry Fruchard, if you know, was uh, a person who gave it a name. He called it a myopactinal orifice of Fruchard. He didn't call it a myopactinal space of Fruchard. When he says an orifice, as we all understand, orifice means a hole. Orifice means a weakening. So he says this area is basically uh, myopactinial, osseal, osseous. This all contributes to a weak area. This is a hole there. And this hole is to be plugged. This hole, this is the reason why it is a hole because many structures are going from the abdomen to the thigh, from the abdomen to the scrotum or the labia majus in females. So these holes, which are different holes were there, which we will see subsequently, the, they make this area weak. So he finally propounded and espoused the theory that this area is weak and this area needs to be supplanted with something like a mesh. So this area has to be supplanted with this thing. Now, what is this area? This area, you all know, is superiorly bounded by the internal oblique and transverses. Laterally, you get the iliosauce. Medially, you have the lateral border of the rectus abdominis and from below, pectin pubis. So we have all of us do these repairs now the tap repair, the tap repair. Now you can see in the tap repair how we make the ports. And this is how we make the ports in the uh, tap repair. This is how we make the ports in the tap repair. But what is my interesting to note is that there is an another, another thing that I wanted to tell you is that the, this is something very interesting that is happening that is uh, quite new. That is ETAP. If you see it down there, what is ETAP is extended totally extraperitoneal repair this extended totally extraperitoneal repair is now growing getting uh, i mean getting um, getting popularized among surgeons because it is uh, it is better over the tap because it has got the triangulation is available which will save when we'll play the video we will show you how etap is different than the tap now you can please pay attention to this picture. I just want you all to please pay attention to this picture. When we enter, we will see with endoscope these things. These folds are very important. If you see, this is the bladder. And this is a fold coming up. The A is umbilicus. This is in the median umbilical ligament. 
uh, which is raised by obliterated uraicus. Then you have five to seven centimeters when you go lateral. There is another fold coming up. It is the medial umbilical ligament, which is uh, raised by the um, uh, obliterated umbilical arteries. And another three to five centimeters lateral, you have another fold that is the lateral umbilical fold, which is raised by the inferior epigastric artery, which is a branch of the external iliac artery. So you create three foci. So this is the medial fossa, median fossa. This is the medial fossa between the two, and this is the lateral fossa. From the lateral fossa, you will develop the indirect hernia because the deep ring will be here. And from these two folds, that is the medial and the uh, lateral fold you will develop the direct hernia and then what will you develop here between the median and the medial you will develop supravasical hernias so this is the area for the supravasical hernias and you can see in this picture we i think better would be when we go to the video we'll show you this is the ring this is the inferior epigastric fold this is the medial umbilical ligament this is the vas this is the vessels this is the triangle of doom being made here this triangle underlying has the vessels and that's the ominous thing we'll see. So let us go ahead and see. These are the, uh, the I mean, the landmarks that you will have to see and uh, recognize before you go to see, uh, before you go to reflect the peritoneum. Now, you once you reflect the peritoneum, after you reflect, what should, what are you going to see over there? Kindly understand that there is a rule of three. So what are you going to see? You are going to see three triangles. That is the Hazelbach's triangle. The triangle of doom, the triangle of pain. You are going to see the three nerves: the genitofemoral nerve, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, the femoral nerve. They are the things that come from the lumbar plexus. You are going to see three ligaments: Cooper's ligament, Lacedor ligament, iliopubic tract. You are going to see the three vessels: inferior epigastric artery the ilike vessels and corona mortis. We will be discussing and showing you in a live, uh, in a, a, a live time video. We, I will be placing and everything we will show, show you how it goes from and how are the things uh, placed over there. So if you take you kindly take your attention to this picture. So when you, <clears throat> this is the picture which is very important to understand. Please pay attention to this picture. What I am showing is that here, this is the pubic symphysis. And if you go 1.25 centimeters lateral, you get an elevation called the pubic tubercle. And from here onwards, you get packed in pubes. So you can see this is the muscle that is going up. This is the rectus abdominis muscle. And this is the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle. It takes an origin from here. Now, from here also, there is an expansion of fibrous expansion of a ligament that comes from the pubic tubercle, packed in pubes and goes like this. It goes towards the anterior superior iliac spine. This is a ligament that's, this is a tract that's called the iliopubic tract. Can you see this? Iliopubic tract. This divides your inguinal region into the superior compartment and the inferior compartment. Now in the superior compartment, you have the lateral border of the rectus uh, abdominis. There is a vessel that will come up from the a vessel down there that is the you can see below this iliopubic tract you have uh, uh, you have uh, something called as a femoral ring or a femoral uh, canal and this has got three compartments the medial most compartment is here the femoral ring it is contributed superiorly by the iliopubic tract medially by the lacunar ligament the lacunar ligament is again an expansion of this if you see anteriorly from the open repairs, it will be like same thing will be there, but that is inguinal ligament. We don't see here inguinal ligament. We see the sister concern of inguinal ligament, that's iliopubic tract. So, so the expansions of this will come down to the uh, packed in pubes, and it was called as the lacunar ligament, which forms the medial border of medial boundary of the femoral ring. And it has got femoral canal has got three. Uh, compartments. This is the ring, which is the um, future site for the femoral hernia. Then, in the intermediate, me in the intermediate compartment, you have the femoral vein, and then you have the femoral artery. And outside the femoral ring, you will have a femoral canal. You will have a femor uh, femoral nerve. 
So I hope you, you can see this picture and this is the deep ring and this is the superficial ring and this is your inguinal canal. So once the vessel which forms the inferior epigastric vessel which is a branch of the uh, external iliac artery, inferior epigastric artery is a branch of the external iliac artery and this makes the lateral border of this triangle. So you can see the triangle is formed over here. This is the Hasselbeck's triangle and this is a weak area where the direct hernia will develop. So that is uh, in this picture we will go to see in the video to see how things look like. Now you need to understand there are many things that you need to be acquainted with. You must be hearing what is the trapezoid of disaster and what are things like space of bog rows, preperitoneal spaces, space of reticules. Let us see one by one. Now and then in this space picture I am taking you, this is the uh, inferior epigastric artery, that is the lateral umbilical ligament, this is the medial umbilical ligament, this is the triangle here, this is the where the uh, direct hernia will develop and this is the internal spermatic artery going down into the retroperitoneum and this is the vas which will go down, uh, open into the prostatic urethra and this makes a triangle from below it will be the, uh, the peritoneum, this will make it the triangle of doom. Why the triangle is doom triangle? Because underlying are the vessels the which you have seen in the uh, in the diagram below, the external lake artery and external lake vein. You have to be very sure that you don't tag there, that you do a meticulous dissection over there without injuring them. So lateral to this, the another triangle comes out. You can see this triangle which is bounded here by the, the internal spermatic artery and laterally it is open. This is the triangle of pain which you have the nerves which I have talked the lateral cutaneous femoral nerve of the thigh, the genitofemoral branch of the thigh, the, you will not see the ileoinguinal or iliohypogastric that we see in the anterior repair. So these nerves are there and we should never uh, you know uh, tack uh, anything below the iliopubic tract. That is the importance of knowing the anatomy. Do not tack here in this region, do not tack here, do not tack here because the iliopubic tract will be going like this. So you have to tack tack uh, above the iliopubic tract. So the space of bogros I will show you in the video. The space of bogros is actually the space that is uh, between the two lamina of the transverse salis fascia. We will see it in, in the next slide. But there is, hello, uh, uh, Pavan, am I, is it audible to all of you? Hello? Yes, yes Professor, okay. it is clear. Fine. We can see and you are very clearly audible to everyone. Fine, fine. Uh, transverse salis fascia, I would like to take a, uh, take a, take a word about this transverse salis fascia. Transverse salis fascia, actually there is a lot of research on the transverse salis fascia. When we were school going, medical school days, we used that, we would understand fascia transverse salis as a unilaminar structure. And this transverse salis fascia is the main thing around which if you understand the disposition of the transverse salis fascia, you will understand the hernia chapter, I should say 50%. But this is the most misunderstood entity in the anatomy of endoscopic anatomy of the inguinal hernia. Let me tell you what transverse salis fascia is all about. It contributes to the formation of the deep ring. It is the only thing that is nothing but the transverse salis fascia is iliopubic tract is an extension of transverse salis fascia. We believe that it is a unilaminar structure, but around 2011 there was a surge by the Thanks to the Department of Science and Technology, we, we, are, we have to be wed with the science and technology. And you can see that because of the high definition cameras, we believe now it is a bilaminar membrane. And it has got an anterior lamina of the transverse salis fascia and the posterior lamina. Where you exactly get these two lamina? When you go one, 2.5 centimeters below the umbilicus, fascia transverse salis splits into two lamina. That is the reason when I will show a video in the tap, tap should be done in the true space of tap. That means if you go between the anterior layer of the transverse salis fascia, which will invest the rectus abdominis muscle, and posterior layer will be on the you know, separated from the anterior layer by the peritoneum. You do not enter into the vascular space, that is anterior space, you enter between the anterior lamina of the fascia transverse cells and the posterior lamina of the fascia transverse cells. This is called the space of bog rose. If you enter this space, you will enjoy surgery. It will be bloodless. If you enter between the rectus abdominis muscle and the anterior lamina of the transverse cells fascia, you will perform tap, but it will be bloody. You will not enjoy. 
that's the reason the people who know how to make how to enter into the space they do not make now the space by balloons they make space by endoscope because you do an endoscopic uh, visual uh, dissection of the space or they will make with vc port or optical ports they know how to enter into the true space of uh, transversalis fascia so that is what is transversalis fascia all about this is also called the fascia of gallaudet and this also contributes to the uh, space of reticus and space of bogros now there is a word you all must have heard about but uh, is not properly understood what exactly is corona mortis what exactly makes corona mortis corona mortis is uh, not in every patient you will have a corona mortis kindly understand you go to this picture this is an endo view of uh, making you understand the corona mortis we have seen few patients where we could find this corona mortis what is corona mortis you see this is the pubic arch this is the pubic symphysis this is pubic tubercle here this is the pubic arch you have a cooper's ligament here and then you have this is the inferior epigastric artery which makes the lateral umbilical ligament which we have seen this is the ring over there the internal ring through which the indirect hernia will come this gives a branch in around 20 to 30 percent this gives a branch the pubic branch which moves like down uh, inferiorly and crosses the uh, what is called as cooper's ligament and you will find that you will have an obturator uh, vessels here obturator artery and vein here obturator artery that's a branch of the and uh, in, uh, internal iliac artery so you will have a branch it will again give a pubic branch the pubic branch of the obturator artery will be here you will have an obturator nerve there kindly do not dissect in this canal you will have an alcox canal there with which you have an obturator nerve so if you injure this create too much of dissection here you will injure the obturator nerve kindly understand it lies below this iliopubic or pubic ramus and there is alcox canal and there is obturator nerve you will get a waddling gait the patient will come to you in the first week with a waddling gait and know that if it is so then you have done the job you have probably injured the obturator nerve so you will have a branch from the obturator vessels that will go like a pubic branch and this will make and anastomosis between the pubic branch of the inferior epigastric and pubic branch of the uh, operator vessel coming up or uh, and it will cross the uh, cooper's ligament this anastomosis is called the what's called as corona mortis it's the, called the circle of death so kindly understand when you expose the uh, what's called as the uh, cooper's ligament there's a fat over it make it clean so that you will uh, not miss that corona mortis is not there because the Cooper's ligament, you know all, it's the first play, place where we fix the mesh. So you should be sure that you don't tack it if corona mortis is over there. You place it safely the tacks over there. Avoid the tacking over this. That is very interesting and important to note by this picture which I wanted to convey to you. So you will go to see the <clears throat> these words as I have said, the triangle of pain. Now what is the triangle of pain? The triangle of pain comes in the lateral preperitoneal pocket. So you can see the lateral space lateral to the ring you will have a space you will have the nerves coming over there and these are the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve this is uh, the branch from the femoral nerve comes from the lumbar plexus you have the femoral branch of the genital femoral nerve you have the genital branch also you have the femoral branch the femoral branch is importantly goes to the thigh and the genital branch will enter the ring uh, into the canal so it is the femoral branch that can get injured in uh, tap or tap and the femoral nerve as such does not get injured but femoral nerve has another branch that's the anterior cutaneous branch that can get injured and if you tack them in this area if you use uh, tacks in this area i don't know uh, all of us are aware that around 2012 the tap went into uh, uh, bad reputation the reason was that they said that they are coming with a lot of pain and uh, something like neuralgia paresthetica because if you are tacking in this area there is a lot of pain these patients do come with paresthesias and pain in the anterior half of the uh, you know the thigh the medial aspect of the leg the scrotum uh, sometimes they are in agony if you are causing only the uh, neuropraxia uh, there is neuropraxia there will be or entrapment or nerve there will be pain but if you are totally transecting the nerve, there will be numbness. So you have to uh, differentiate if patient comes with pain, sometimes we have to redo or the surgery and remove these tacks. 
so it gave a bad name to tap and tap the reason was because we were making these nerves exposed trying to show in workshops but kindly understand do not make them naked now let the some fat stay there and let them sleep and do not tack over there this is the area that's called the, the triangle of pain and this pain is very uh, gastrologic type which is called as neuralgia paresthetica kindly understand that we do not see ileo ileo hypogastric or ileo inguinal that is l1 or l12 uh, which come from the lumbar plexus we do not see these nerves in uh, this uh. so i am opening a video kindly stay with this video and kindly understand that i will be uh, placing trying to show you i am going in doing a tap see i'll only say show you the anatomical aspects which is important in this lecture for me so you can see i have stopped the video i don't know uh, whether it has stopped okay have i stopped it right hello hello you hello? stopped it now you stopped okay. it now okay 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 i'm playing again i have stopped okay. it again uh, i'm taking it little back to show you what actually i want to show you what actually i want to show you so please okay. stay tuned uh, we'll again starting it i wanted to show you something uh, so you can see this is the i'm standing on the right side of the uh, sorry i'm standing on the left side of the patient and you can see that we have gone to see i will just stop it here okay i have stopped it please now understand the anatomy what we have talked you can see a hole over there this is the deep ring so your endoscope is facing to the inguinal region you can see a fold this fold which i was talking this is the lateral umbilical ligament and it is raised by inferior epigastric artery can you see this makes the medial border of the this is the left side i am operating so this is the left side so the this is the ring and the ring is patulous if the ring is patulous it is gilbert type 1 though we do not believe in gilbert classification laparoscopically but this qualifies at gilbert type 1 because the things can move into the canal so kindly understand this is the inferior epigastric artery which raises the fold above the this is the inferior epigastric fold can you see this fold this is the fold called as the medial umbilical ligament this is the lateral umbilical ligament and between the medial and the lateral umbilical ligament this area is uh, hazelbeck triangle and this triangle will is important to understand i will release the video kindly watch now i will go to the other side and show you on the other side how the anatomy will look like so move to this side this is the right side of the patient okay i have stopped now i have stopped the video please pay attention to this anatomy this is the right side of the patient this patient you can see this is the fold this is the inferior epigastric artery raising a fold called as the lateral umbilical ligament you can see here is the deep ring this side it is patent i mean it is not patulous there is no hernia on this side you can see a structure coming out like this this is the interspermatic artery and another structure coming medially this is the uh, vasa differentia so this will make a triangle like this below by the peritoneum this is called the triangle of pain or triangle of doom sorry triangle of doom is here and this fossa between the inferior epigastric this is another fold here this is the medial umbilical ligament so the uh, space between the lateral umbilical ligament and the medial umbilical ligament this is the area uh, where the direct hernia comes and through this this is the area where the indirect hernia comes something can pop in and then uh, hernia indirect hernia develops this is the hazelbacks area or the posterior wall of the inguinal canal where the direct hernia comes and this is the medial inguinal medial umbilical ligament here is the median umbilical ligament and the area that between the medial and the median is where these hernias can develop here also and they are called supravesical hernias so i will release the video and stay with me so here we are seeing that now what are we going to do we will dissect the peritoneum now and see the anatomy after reflecting the peritoneum so where do you make an incision you go 3.5 cm superior lateral to the a uh, deep ring and lift make a small incision in the peritoneum let the gas go in if you can appreciate this peritoneum only i am cutting i am not taking this yellow thing that is fat that fat belongs to abdomen can you understand that fat always belongs to abdomen as fat belongs to rectum well we do that surgery here fat belongs to abdomen i am only lifting the thin layer of peritoneum and this loose areolar tissue is nothing but fascia transversalis now the japanese say this is a 
poor laminar structure they are doing a research saying that this could be a poor laminar structures the uh, fascia transfer cells is a very interesting subject uh, sub uh, structure which a lot of research is going on this so you can understand now i am just trying to cross the this fold that is the fold raised by the inferior epigastric artery i hope you can appreciate in a short while now i am reaching the vessel so don't uh, misunderstand this part so uh, right understand it that underlying you can see this vessel this is inferior epigastric artery and it is always with some two vein veins were there the inferior epigastric veins the venae comitantes of the vessel so you can see that after this we have crossed now we are between the inferior epigastric artery and the medial uh, medial umbilical ligament i am cutting this now what i am going to open up i will open up a space called as the hazel back triangle now kindly understand and stay here this is the triangle my left hand will first open do not go beyond the medial umbilical ligament don't cut this fold enter and open this space you will see the first structure right now you will see the first structure that will be quite whitish that whitish structure you can see in a short while you can see it that white structure is what you called as the yes that's the white structure that is the the structure we call it cooper's ligament so i am developing this space i will stop the video here i hope you appreciate let me just go it little ahead Now I was trying to show you that okay, this is the place where I should stop stop the video. Now please understand this anatomy. This is the inferior epigastric artery, and medially you come. This is the rectus abdominis. This is the lateral border of the rectus abdominis. This is the mm, inferior epigastric artery, which is the raises which makes the lateral umbilical ligament. And so this is the apex. A branch is going from the inferior epigastric to the rectus, and from below. if you see the anterior anatomy you will see the inguinal ligament for, uh, forming the floor here you have the pubic ramus or iliopubic tract which will form the floor and this is the triangle which is called as the hazelback triangle so this is the area where the direct hernia will develop i hope you appreciate this part this triangle here now we are making a medial preperitoneal pocket now this is the pubic ramus and this is the pubic symphysis there are a lot of anastomotic veins and uh, vessels were here running do not rub on them this is called as uh, uh, what is called as bindovid's anastomotic circle now we go to the lateral preperitoneal pouch and dissect the lateral preperitoneal space in between you have the sac and this is the ring now i am dissecting the lateral space and what is the idea to do the lateral space dissect it till the iliosos is visible so the medial and the lateral space are straddled or divided by this you are uh, peritoneal uh, uh, spermatic cord or the peritoneal sac in a short while now you will be seeing so <clears throat> in, this is the medial space medial preperitoneal pocket down there is the bladder and you will see lateral preperitoneal space now what am i going to do i am separating traction and counter traction this is the sac in my left hand which i am trying to separate from the uh, Pseudo sac that is the fascia transfer cells. In this patient, we have done orchidectomy. So I selected this patient for the demonstration of hernia because you will see we have removed the test uh, all the spermatic cord because I wanted to show you the anatomy after removing the spermatic cord. Uh, so we have done the orchidectomy in this patient and removed the testes from below by making a small incision on the scrotum. Now you can see this. This is the middle space here. You will find. a very important structures here or what i was saying that this this is the lateral space these are the nerves can you see the nerves here so you do not ever do keep the fat over them do not i'm just touching for showing you uh, keep them there so the superior flap should be raised so because the mesh has to go under the under the superior flap now this superior flap has to go and take the superior flap up and then because the mesh has to go and then you have to repair the uh, superior flap now in a uh, i will just go little ahead okay and i will stop the uh, video here to tell you something more here now please understand that i have stopped the video let it go little more 
So you separate the sag, you separate the thing. I am not going to show you how we remove this because I want to show you after we remove this, we have to remove all this. You can see the sack and you can see the structure, the contents of the sack. So you can see a yellow thing here. That is the fat at the deep ring, which we always say this is one of the uh, marks, markers of defining the deep ring. So I, we always remove this uh, fat. It should be removed because this is the future site for the, uh, you can develop a lipoma over there. So once we remove this fat, you can see we clean this, remove this fat. Now you see, we're doing traction and counter traction. I wanted to take you to this anatomy here. So let us, let us squeeze the video. Now please understand, this is the inferior epigastric artery going up. This is the deep ring through which, through this is the ring through which this sac is coming, superbendic cord is coming. This is the triangle of Hazelbach's triangle. This is fascia transfer cells making the posterior wall over here. This is the lateral preperitoneal pocket and this is the medial preperitoneal. And this white structure over here you can see is Cooper's ligament. We will release the video to go ahead. Uh, I hope I am audible. Am I audible and hello? Yes, you are audible and your video is very clear. We can see that. Fine, fine. You can see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to separate the sac from the from the structures of the cord. And now I'm not going to show you this. I will go ahead uh, in this video. My aim to show you is that after we uh, lift the sac, underlying are the vessels. So this is the triangle of doom over there, down. So you will see that I will separate the sac from this and lift the whole sac up. Make always sure that you lift it up because when you are lifting and then dissecting the sac, you have less chances of injuring the vessels there. Here we have uh, ominous things thing there that is the external ileic artery, external ileic vein. So we will separate the sac. That part I will just quickly go ahead. So now you can see we are splitting the spermatic cord with the sac and take the sac on one end and you will see the vas will come on the other end. This all is sac. This is a big sac in this patient over here. So, uh, so this is this uh, vas on one side, and the vessels and uh, sac will be taken. We will ligate the sac at the here. I am ligating at the base, just for you to see. I will remove this all, just ligating the sac, and we will remove this sac and all that from through the inguinal canal and making an incision down. And then we will take the, uh, because we are doing an orchidectomy in this patient, we had an orchidectomy. That's the reason why you will not, see, you will see that, see. So we're suturing this, uh, the sac, uh, and we will uh, cauterize it and remove the sac. That part you can just, I will go ahead. So we have removed the vas also. Right. Fine. So I'll go ahead to show ahead what is my idea to show you that. So you can see the sac. I am pulling it. This is the ring. You can see I wanted to show you the ring. This is the deep ring and this is the canal. This is the posterior wall of the canal. This is inferior epigastric artery. This is pubic symphysis, pubic arch. You have puboprostatic ligaments here down there. Do not fiddle with them and do not uh, dissect two centimeters below the pubic symphysis because you will have a structure here called the prostate and you will injure the prostatic uh, capsule. So you can see we are pushing this uh, sac the way we have taken it through the inguinal canal and making an incision there. This is the deep ring there. Okay, we come out. Uh, before putting a mesh, let me take you a little in. So I will freeze the video here and tell you little more things. So before I put the mesh, let me let me freeze the video over here because I want to take a look of how things appear. Uh, so I'm pushing the sac down and taking it out along with the testes. So okay, I have I have I have done. I have just stopped the video. Please pay an attention to this. Can you see this is the pubic symphysis? This is the pubic arch, pubic symphysis, pubic arch, pubic tubercle would be here. And this is the pubic arch. This is the Cooper's ligament. You have the femoral ring here below the 
inferior epigastric and deep ring it is 1.25 centimeters below here you will have the femoral ring where femoral hernia will come and this is the triangle of please understand this is the triangle of hazel back this is the rectus abdominis muscle going up this is the lateral border this is inferior epigastric and the base is formed by the the iliopubic tract the iliopubic tract will come from here from pubic tubercle it will go like this it will form the floor of the deep ring and will go like this towards the anterior superior iliac spine i will release the video so i will go little eye up so you can see this all the structures now why i am showing you this is the ring this is the deep ring the inferior epigastric these are the external iliac vessel here and this is the doom area it is beating you can see the beating vessel over there and the lateral space would be the triangle of doom uh, here uh, sorry the triangle of pain we are not going to see them we have seen them and here we have this is how the structures will appear after removing the spermatic cord now we are putting a mesh this is a 2d mesh of uh, from the covidian possibly and this is a macroporous mesh and it is polyester you can use proline uh, the size uh, recommended as you know all it is <clears throat> 16 by 12 and it should cover the area idea is it should cover the whole myopactinal orifice of fruit chart. I'll just go really and see how we uh, fix the mesh. And this mesh is a 2D because it should stay one third down and two third up. And it should cover all myopactinal orifice of fruit chart, which we understand now what exactly we mean by myopactinal. It should plug in all the holes and mesh should be laid, splayed nicely and properly. There should be no wrinkling in the mesh. And then you can suture. We are using the barbed wire uh, to suture this. 15 centimeter is the best length you should select to suture back this and this. Uh, and we complete the procedure. The mesh stays in. Do not uh, make sure that mesh does not curl in. And that's how we go. I will just take you to a procedure, another procedure. Lattice has gained a lot of now. Uh, this is a procedure we are doing an ETEP. Am I am I audible and uh, can everything be seen? Yes, Amanji? you are audible. Okay, you are audible. So this is a patient where we are demonstrating anatomy by ETEP. ETEP is extended totally extraperitoneal repair. You can see the patient and you can see the inguinal hernia is here. He has bilateral inguinal hernias. These bulges can be seen one here and one there. So he has a bilateral inguinal hernia. Now, why exactly I am standing on the right side of the patient, and this is the foot end of the patient, and this is the umbilicus. I will go 3.5 centimeters superior lateral. This is umbilicus. I'm going three centimeters above and at the right. We'll get into the session soon. Incisional hernia and the same sting. Yeah, you can do all procedures like TAR, you can do ETEP, RS, you can do everything by ETEP. That's why it has gained a lot of you know the uh, familiar this uh, reputation. But it needs to be done in a proper way. So, what I'm doing is that at this part of the body, you don't have superficial fascia, we are above the umbilicus. So, we are splitting the by these two small angle detectors you have where cut the skin you can see the skin is cut and the fat is cut you have subcutaneous fat in a short while what we are doing we are trying to clear this fat clear try to clear this fat uh from this and you will see the whitish structure of that is anterior rectus sheath so we are trying to clean the fat you can see this whitish structure i hope you can appreciate this white structure there that is anterior rectus sheath now, after you see uh, the anterior, Jaco, sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt you. You haven't shared your screen. Where Please, is my screen? Uh, you have stopped sharing it. Uh, click on the share your screen again. Where? Where is that? I don't know. I mean, below you have a uh, uh, shared your screen. Uh, share your screen uh, option. Click on that. I can't see that. I can't see. It's let there. me. Let me. Where is the? No, I yes, you have stopped sharing the clean screen actually. So how in can the bottom, I do that? 
can in the bottom yeah, can in the bottom side uh, there is a, a share your screen option you have done till now uh, wait i will stop the video how should no, i do it not, should i not stop the video click on right. share your screen that's all click on where is because everything is my presentation okay uh, go to the air meet thing pardon go to the air meet air meet window air meet window okay no okay click on share your screen share your screen bottom side there is a, a symbol of uh, desktop you can click on that share your screen okay yes is it okay has it you come click on that. no I haven't come yet have you clicked on it? Yeah, I have clicked it. Yeah, now it's there. Okay, I will go back to presentation. Yeah, yes, yes, go back to your presentation. Uh, so I was just here. Kindly stay yeah, with me. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, now we can see it. Fine. So now we can you can see my am I on screen? You are on screen. Your video is on screen. You can go ahead. Fine. Actually, this was disturbing me. That's why. Okay. Yeah. By I was trying to show you. Uh, let us go. We were here. I'll take you back. Okay. No, I will. I was here. Okay. Okay. You can see this white structure. Is this again yes, visible? Yes. Yes, Fine. yes. So this is the anterior rectus sheet. We are doing an ETA procedure. So after you see this white, you cut this white. This is anterior rectus sheet. Cut it. So uh, when you cut the anterior rectus sheet, you will find something uh, reddish. That is rectus abdominis. So uh, rectus abdominis will be seen. Uh, you cut with the scissor. I hope you appreciate this fleshy fibers, red fibers down there. After cutting the anterior rectus abdominis, you can find this red uh, reddish structure. So this is uh, rectus abdominis muscle. Now, what are we going to do after this? After cutting the rect uh, anterior rectus sheet, so you can see appreciate. I hope you can appreciate. This is rectus abdominis. Now we are taking the rectus abdominis to one side, and we will see another whitish structure that is posterior rectus sheet. So posterior rectus sheet. Can you see that white structure down there? That the muscle rectus abdominis has been taken to one side, and you have seen the posterior rectus sheet. Now I have. In the habit of making the space by my index finger, I use quite a bit of my index finger, right index finger. I lubricate it and we, we place uh, the you can see the finger is going retro rectus. So we are making the small space because we do not believe in making spaces by balloons. We make a space, we don't use VZ ports or optical because they are very costly. We are working with uh, finance constraint. So you see the we are making I am making a space by my index finger by just uh, striding on the right and left. Now we can see the rectus sheet, and now we will make a space and put a obturator for an obturator of the Hassan stroke arc, lubricate it and let it go towards the pubic pubic arch. You can appreciate this is we are trying to make the retro rectus space. So after the retro rectus space is made, made, we put 12 mm trocar here and stabilize the 12 mm trocar. I'll just take the video a little ahead. Stabilize the trocar. Now we are entering. Okay, you can you are entered into a space called as the retro rectus space. So this is the space. This is the basis of the ETEP. So what is the idea? Thanks to George Dace, this is his concept that you can enter extra retro rectus space anywhere or retro. Uh, uh, extra peritoneal space anywhere from the abdomen so that is the idea that you can see that we have entered the retro rectus space and we are going to develop it now telescopically that is the uh, uh, Phillips technique uh, Phillips technique is the technique of making the space by telescope now you can appreciate I hope you can appreciate we are going below the uh, umbilicus and we are entering into the hypogastrum and since we are doing a bilateral hernia in this patient you will see that we will create a space we will do a midline crossover from the 
uh, what you call as the hypogastric inferior crossover. The crossover can be done from below the umbilicus, crossover can be done from above the umbilicus. From above the umbilicus, you cut, you go through the false quorum ligament, cut, uh, cut the posterior rectus sheet of one side and posterior rectus sheet of the other side, and then communicate. This whole space is basically one. So that is what is the concept of uh, rival stopa, that you can communicate this retrorectus spa space into one. So after you make the retrorectus space, I'm putting a needle over here and doing a needle guided 5 mm port I'm putting. Uh, so this is the 5 mm port. So we put two 5 mm ports and do the procedure. This is one 5 mm port. Another 5 mm port will come from the side of umbilicus. You can make it through the umbilicus or below umbilicus or above umbilicus, whatever. So what, I, what am I doing? I'm trying to create a space, pushing the posterior rectus sheath down. And this is the rectus abdominis muscle. So we will enter by another 5 mm port here, where this is. If you push the uh, posterior rectus sheet down, you will uh, create a space between the rectus and the posterior rectus sheet. From above, you are pressing with a finger or we we'll put a needle to see whether we are in this space. So you can put a needle and see whether this needle enters in this space. If it enters in this space, that yes, this is the needle. So the, you make a needle guided 5 mm port from outside. You can see that 5 mm, another 5 mm port will enter and will enter into this retrorectal space. So once these two ports are available to us, we are having now triangulation. This triangulation was not possible in TEP. So TEP uh, is, uh, uh, is getting, I mean, not uh, now quite many people have left doing TEP because they feel more happy because the triangulation is there. You can make a bigger space. You can communicate. You can treat multiple hernias. You can take even the incisional hernia with the same going com complex hernias and you can also put a bigger meshes which were not which was not possible in the tap and triangulation and suturing can be done because triangulation is uh, available to you because the, you can see the triangle makes an angle of laparoscopy 60 degree so this triangulation is not possible in tap that's why tap is getting a bad reputation but mm, we keep on doing tap also but uh, i think for bilateral hernias for bigger hernias but if you have a uh, incisional hernia associated or recurrent hernias, this is the better uh, technique where we go. So we are now going down to see where we are doing a bilateral hernia, so we need to cross over. So I am exactly uh, in the right space, right preperitoneal space. So these uh, preperitoneal fat and uh, this, uh, these vessels are there. So we will ligate them and try to create a this way. If you do not ligate them, they will cause some messy bleeding and that will uh, you know, mop up your, uh, your light and you may probably not see the things well. So uh, you can see down there on the right side, this patient, we're trying to develop a space. This patient is having a hernia. He is both hernia on the right side. You'll see the direct hernia. I will show you how the direct hernia would come. And then you see the rectus muscle is on the top and I am dissecting by traction and counter traction and trying to create a bigger space we have crossed the other side you can see we have gone to the other side uh, in a short while now we will be reaching to the uh, uh let me go see now this is the or orchid line can you see the orchid line this is orchid line it is 2.5 centimeters below the ingoin uh, umbilicus and below this is only fascia transfer cells there's no can you see this white structure over here this is the direct sac on the right side and I'm going to the left side to make a space in the left side. You can see the amount of space that you can make. I mean, that is what is the beauty about the ETF. See the amount of space or how much comfortable you are and how much dissection can be done. You can go as lateral as iliosaurus on either side and put a big mesh, something like we do in uh, ETF RS. So I'm dissecting on the other side. Let me go a little faster. So we can see on the other side, now we're trying to dissect on the other side. In a short while now you can see, you can see the Cooper's ligament here on the right side. You can see the ring here. You can see the, uh, the structures of uh, the spermatic cord. And on the right side, he has only indirect hernia, but on the, Left side, you will see he had a very big hernia, which I'm going to show you just now. Stay with me. 
okay fine you can see this is the hernia now how do you call it is a direct hernia kindly understand that this is the pubic arch all and this is a something going up towards the triangle of hazelback triangle this was a big hernia uh, direct hernia coming medial to the inferior epigastric artery so any hernia that comes medial to the inferior epigastric artery is a direct hernia you can see it is going and this all is going up and going down so you will see that we will be dissecting it and now this is the indirect part because the ring is here now this is the deep ring here and you can see the deep ring and these are the structures of the spermatic cord so this is the indirect hernia here this side and this is the direct hernia this one which is plugged still up and we had to struggle a lot to take this contents down so so you here you can see the deep ring and you can see the uh, the structures exiting from the deep ring is it audible to all is it am i audible hello hello yes you are audible and the video oh, okay, we can fine. see also okay you can see yes now yes you are to... audible yeah okay fine i am taking this uh, sac down this is the sac of the direct hernia this is the sac of the direct hernia uh, so fine uh, so you can see that this hernia this is the sac you can see and it lies this is the ring so it lies medial to this so this becomes a direct hernia which i have shown that this is hazelback triangle through which this hernia direct hernia has gone up so this uh, we are pushing the contents down and in a short while now you will see the contents will come down done fine uh, so you can see it was a very huge hernia contents were locked possibly an incarcerated one so we are pushing the contents by traction and counter traction so go little ahead yes you can see now the contents are falling down this is the content of the but what we are we were worried that this could not be a uh, something uh, gut or something there you can see a hole over there can you see this hole you can see this big hole this is the hole in the hazelback and this is what direct hernia defect and you will need to tack the pseudo sac to the cooper's ligament this is we are pressing from outside but we were not sure whether such a big hernia may have something inside because you are in an ex extra peritoneal uh, compartment you don't know whether gut is there that is the worry so what we do the beauty of etap is that you can open this sac here and then prepare it because you can do suturing in etap so you see when i am opening this sac to see whether gut is not there we are not handled it so we are entering the peritoneum at this place at this stage nothing your space is not going to collapse because you are equalizing the pressure on both sides so uh, you can see we will open this sack and see whether gut was not there we see in a short while now i am forwarding the video so fine right now this is on the other side this is on the other side this is the triangle of room and we are taking the sac a flimsy sac was on the other side we're taking that sac also out i hope you can appreciate the amount of space is available to you in etap that is uh, interesting to note so you can see these are the now if you visit the anatomy whole anatomy once again let us see i hope you can appreciate this is on one side of the hernia we have tackled on the left side this is on the right side of the direct uh, indirect hernia we are tackling direct we have seen we have dropped that down and this is skeletalization of the sac we have done so i'll move a little faster fine now you can see i had said that i will open the that direct sac i have opened it now we are suturing that direct sac see this is open direct sac here and we can suture this direct sac also now you can see we are suturing and after looking peeping into the abdomen this is abdominal it was only omental fat over there nothing more so we are suturing this uh, defect here so this defect can be sutured 
So after suturing the defect, you can see this defect is sutured. Then we are going to revise this anatomy. This is whole space. Uh, there is some rent here also. So we are repairing that rent in the peritoneum. You can see this is the beauty about the ETAP that you can do suturing and any rents can be closed. Fine. Now we are putting a mesh. Now in this we are putting a mesh, 3D mesh. This is a 3D mesh, the proline. This is a heavyweight mesh and it has got a margin. This is marketed by BOD and you can see this mesh is a three-dimensional mesh because it is contoured to the anatomy or uh, the orientation of the what you call as the uh, inguinal, uh, inguinal canal. It just has to go and stuck. Even if you don't fix it, no need. And uh, you should cross the midline three centimeters by putting two meshes. You have blue mark there. M is written means medial. It is for the right side. And another mesh we are going to put on the other side is the another mesh. And we will tag first at the coopers and then you can see the other mesh is put and the direct sac contents are pushed uh, forwards, push this mesh down and then release the contents. Now if you see in a short while you will see both the meshes are being put and you can push it down mesh and then fix it. You can see the both the meshes are put and contents will stay on top of this mesh. So this is a 3D mesh and uh, this is a... Uh, a board makes this mesh it's a little costly, but it is good for such hernias, huge hernias. Uh, we have a good experience of using these meshes. Uh, uh, so, fine. I think uh, I should stop it here because the fasting season is there and it is it's our time. I, I, I would say I'm thankful to everybody who has joined me. Uh, just few questions if there are, I'm ready to answer them. And I would say keep conquering and stay home stay happy stay healthy and thank you everybody for uh, joining me uh, so long and going with me uh, thank you very much thank you pavan i hope uh, if there are questions i am ready to answer yeah. all of them yeah uh, from attendees uh, if there are any questions you can just raise your hand or you can put your question in the chat box so that uh, your uh, questions will be answered then and there you can either raise your hand uh, so that i can uh, make you uh, access and you can raise your uh, hand and ask the questions or you can just put over in the chat box that will be addressed by dr mustak chaku and that was a very uh, informative session, Professor Chaku. And uh, yeah, that was a very detailed and your work is were always appreciated because you have done a lot of uh, good work. Yes. And uh, he is a current editorial board member for Enleven Archive, uh, Enleven uh, Surgery and Transplantation. And uh, we uh, hereby are conducting uh, webinars on behalf of Enleven Archive and GNOME Publications, which are both uh, open access and are uh, handling uh, peer reviewed journals, where Enleven Archive contains of uh, 25 peer reviewed journals and uh, uh, GNOME consists of eight uh, open access peer reviewed journals. And I uh, request uh, Professor Chaku to uh, kindly suggest the journal to your colleagues and members and uh, students who can actually submit their uh, versions to us and uh, get the uh, you know uh, get their work published. And uh, if if uh, you can uh, promote uh, the journal in your circle and uh, you know we can go ahead with the successful journey of the uh, journal. Absolutely, absolutely, Pawan. Thank you very much and. Thank you for inviting me for this talk and I'm uh, thankful to everybody who ever joined us with and uh, I be, uh, stood with me for so long a journey of I think one hour and uh, more than 15 minutes and I hope I have done justice with the subject there is much to learn more about and thank you once again I uh, happy Ramadan uh, happy go thank you very much
yeah uh, that was uh, a good session and uh, it is always our uh, privilege to have your talks and uh, your presence in our uh, journals i would like to thank uh, professor uh, mustak chaku and also all attendees for uh, making this webinar successful and uh, yeah as there are no questions i would like to end the session here after and thanks a lot uh, uh, professor mustak chaku for your time and for your uh, lively presentations thank you thank you very much goodbye i'm in goodbye thank you i'm ending the session thank you, thank you. bye